What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS bringing you the very next video. We got week two CWL Premier Fortune Steel versus Valar Mogulis and FFS walking away with a solid two star victory. This is our first victory uh, in season four. 116 to 114 was the final. What an incredible war this was coming down to the last maybe 10 minutes before we really had a good understanding where this war was going. Uh, as you guys can see with the Town Hall 10s, the difference is uh, we cleared 10s. They left two 10s up and I do have an 11v11 three star to show you guys. A lot of the stats were really similar. Uh, we've seen some wars decided on 11v11s. So we'll go ahead and start off. Uh, with one Town Hall 9 attack for you guys. We'll get that in the background while I break down the stats for you guys. Uh, so we each had an 11v11 three star. Uh, but like I said, this one was decided on 10v10s. We had nine 10v10s this war where they had seven 10v10s. Both sides had an 11v11 triple. Both sides clearing nines with nines. They actually uh, cleared with a few less attacks uh, than us. Uh, but both sides... Uh, did get the job done. Nines clearing nines. And as far as uh, where we're still looking to improve is the 10 v 11 game. Uh, we went three for 10. One of those uh, bases we decided to 11 v 11 three star. Uh, and I will be showing that at the very, very end. Shout out uh, to poor self control getting yet another 11 v 11 three star. So good job to him. And. Uh, I mean, just all around, it was just a really, I mean, it was just a remarkable war. Uh, I mean, we were ahead by a couple uh, three stars in the beginning, then they jumped ahead, then we jumped ahead, and towards the very end, uh, I think in, in like one hour, we had, what was it, three? We had three back-to-back, to back, to back uh, 10v10 three stars, which really put us ahead. Uh, and then again, it just came down to the last maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes of war until it was really decided. Uh, but huge shout out to everybody over in Valar Mugulis. It was a really, really fun war. I was glad to be a part of it. And I could not believe it. I'll be showing you guys one of my attacks. I could not believe the fact that I was able to 10v10 six pack yet again here in uh week two I had a 10v10 six pack week one and then I had a 10v10 six pack in week two in cwo premier season four cannot believe it um but yeah we'll be getting into one of those attacks huge shout out to spim uh he had a 9v9 six pack this war using that very attack strategy uh so huge shout out to him with the shattered um Bo lalo good job dude all right so now we're gonna get into some of the heavy hitter action we're gonna be starting off with Clayton Bigsby, AKA Cody, doing it with Bitch. We've seen him do hog attacks. We have seen him do different variations of Lalo. Now we got Cody doing it with Bitch right here, guys. Uh, and, and then, uh, like we said, because these single shot Inferno Towers, we, we do still see people using Golems. But on this one, he went ahead and went with the Giants as he was on the initial entry as he's approaching that single shot Inferno. Uh, so go, went ahead and went with Giants. And look at the push that he does. I know we see a lot of uh, bitch attacks where it really comes down to like the Queen Walk, you know, wrapping the band or, you know, just a few witches and a couple bowlers closing it out. Wait till you guys see this. I mean, he, he has all kinds of troops up. There was no question that this was going to be a three-star right about now at this point. Uh, but yeah, with some bitch attacks, you just don't know. But Cody completely smashing this base. Uh, good job to him. And we did have this scouted with a Town Hall 9, uh, like using like, is Witch Slap, I guess. Um, or like, you know, bitch style, you know, Town Hall 9 attack. And when we saw how far that scout got, we said, we got to do this with the 10 now. Cody getting the job done. Huge shout out to him. All right. And I know in the last recap, I showed both of my attacks. And we didn't we didn't have as many 10v10s that were either. Um, but I mean, we had nine 10v10s. So I'm just going to show one of my attacks this war. Um, but yeah, I did have a 10v10 six pack. Huge shout out to me. All right. This one was all about the funnel 
this badass funnel right here, which is a couple wizards up at the top. Here goes the baby dragon, queen behind. Uh, this is going, this is a Hound Loon CC, and this is why a lot of us are now saying to not run a Hound CC, because look at this value you get from your queen. She's taking out the wizard tower. She's taking out two archer towers on this attack. So here we go, Golem coming down. Uh, Tesla pops uh, just above those three elixir storages. So here we go. Uh, we're entering with just five, no, no, six bowlers. Uh, King coming down. Jump spell pretty much leading right to the core. And if you can see where the queen is, we know that she's going to hop the wall. Poison spell down to go ahead and capture that loon right there. And there we go. Go ahead and drop the rage. Bowlers all raged up. We got King raged up. We got the Golem raged up. We're going to get the bomb tower on the entry. And here we go. While the kill squad is still up, sending just a few hogs up there at the top to get that cannon. And then a few hogs on the wizard tower and some on the bottom side of the wizard tower. Uh, heal spell covering the bomb and two wizard towers plus uh, inside that archer tower range. CC hogs coming in at six o'clock where there was uh, one Tesla down there. Kind of get a shitty split right here. Uh, but hogs pretty much one shot that mortar. They come back in to meet up with the main group under that heal spell. Uh, those hogs are going to take out the wizard tower that was also inside that heal spell. And here we go. Nice and patient here as the inferno tower comes down and we're approaching the bomb tower. Uh, go ahead and drop down the other heel. And if you look on the back end, if you look on the back end, there's only uh, the Tesla and two cannons. Uh, up here at the top, there's three of uh, three air defenses up there. Uh, so definitely knew we were going to make it through this one. Here we go. Clutch Miner. Always being a miner for a cleanup. When you guys are scouting bases, look and see how much uh, storages and or trash buildings are inside the base. Um, and if there's more than say four buildings inside inside the base, uh, definitely bring a miner. Um, yeah, it helps a lot on cleanup. Okay, guys, we're gonna show you guys another bitch attack. Uh, they had a few of them for us this war, and again, bring in uh, not bringing any golems, just bringing the giants. Uh, and we see that both of the inferno towers, of course, on single shot. And I'm telling you guys, if you can find a base. Uh, if you can find a base where you can have nice flanks and where you can have two jumps that are going to get you through the base, this is a very, very strong attack right now. Uh, people who don't even usually use a, a bitch style attack, using them and getting three stars. Chimo is one of those guys. And here we go. Uh, so we, as you guys see, heal and rage inside the core. Second jump leading everything into the back end. And because it was a damage CC, we did go ahead and send in Queen. Uh, if you know it's going to be Hound, that's usually when you do the Queen, the Queen walk style. Um, but look at how many troops are still up. This is another one of those bitch attacks uh, where you where you just know it's going to be wrecked. Uh, pretty much ends up swagging Queen ability here, uh, ending even on all these defenses. Look at how much uh, tanking uh, those Skellies are doing from the witches. Pretty much swagged the uh, Archer Queen ability. Huge shout out uh, to Chimo getting a three star uh, and using an attack that he doesn't usually do. Um, but it's working really, really well right now, you guys, on the right bases. Okay, next up we have uh, D's Nuts. And what is he going to be? This is the one. Yes, uh, this is going to be his Shattered Goho. What's more, uh, or Shattered Hobo, what's more remarkable about this attack, you guys? is the fact that this attack was done fresh yes this was not scouted we didn't have a lot of scouts uh, i mean like i said our nines did decent you know we cleared nines with nines we had a few scouts uh but this was one of the bases that we unfortunately did not have scouts on uh, but yeah starting over here on the left hand side of the base entering in at about eight o'clock jumping in no wall breakers raging up uh, that kill squad that poison uh taking care of not only the queen but helping out take care of the king as well and of course the cc troops so here comes the hogs coming in and just got incredible value from that push and he brought like 11 bowlers on that funnel right there so huge i mean just an incredible uh value that he got from that kill squad second heal spell down covering the inferno tower uh, covering a couple bombs inside that core and especially that king who's still up 
almost has that king down. Uh, but here we go. Third heal spell is down. Just a jump, uh, just a jump in a rage. He was on the kill squad, leaving him three heal spells for the back end. Last defense, you guys. Two go down is going to be this air defense right here. And look at all those ground skellies. But he has more hogs in that pack than it looks like. Uh, still has a couple bowlers up since he brought so many. But check this out. Look at how clutch this is going to be, you guys. Uh, Queen ends up taking out King. Uh, they pretty much killed each other last shot. That was madness, but still had enough hogs to take out the clan castle. Get that three star. Huge shout to Fuzz. Um, always, just always getting it done. Okay, guys, next up. Here is another, here is another fresh 10v10 three star. Unscouted, you guys, fresh. We got Tadpole coming in here, starting his queen walk up here uh, at nine o'clock, not knowing the Teslas not knowing the CC, not knowing any other traps. Um, this was a huge, huge attack coming in uh, towards the last few hours of war, you guys. And here we go. Th this part right here, I, it was, I saw this one live. I thought this was so sketch right here. I, I thought the healers were gonna, excuse me. I thought the healers were gonna peel off of the queen and start healing up the king as you have both heroes kind of clumped up right here. Uh, king taking a lot of damage. Uh, but luckily, Queen is also taking damage. That's why the healers have not left her. So there we go. Hound pops. Uh, Archer, Queen taking out the pups. And there you go. You see that wall junction that he broke uh, at about 10 o'clock up there. Uh, taking out this air defense. She is fighting a sweeper, but he does still have another rage. There it goes. And he is in range of that air defense as well. So two out of the four air defenses already down. He's going to be starting his Lalo over here at 9 o'clock. We're dropping down two haste, two huge wazaloons. Uh, another hound down coming in from six. We has more loons dropping down a haste. Uh, and you see those hounds pretty much tanking uh, the wizard towers, tanking uh, the air defenses, the archer towers, the expo. Rage down in the core. Uh, haste spell dropped in at about four o'clock. And as you guys can see, he's all out of spells. But look at that loon split. That was the most FP loon split I have ever seen. Right on the Inferno Tower, there's about four defenses up, loon splitting perfectly. Huge shout to Tad, getting it done. And look at that, guys, queen beating on walls. Uh, it was just brilliant. And the fact that this was a fresh, a, a, a fresh 10v10, this was so clutch in our war. All right, guys, next up is... Uh, a, t a 10 v 11 attack. We're gonna show you guys one 10 v 11, and then I'm gonna show you guys the 11 v 11 triple before we go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, like I said, this was such a good war. So happy to be a part of it and the way everybody performed. But we got soggy, guys. This is the attack I'm talking about using a free spell, but wait until you guys see the value that soggy gets from this free spell hopefully you've made it this far into the video but we got a queen walk starting up here at 11 o'clock she's going to be walking down um and and this is going to be kind of like a queen walk uh bowler smash but using a free spell just just a straight up bass attack queen bee lining it across like four buildings uh, but she's gonna go ahead and lock onto the gold storage not sure why she did that but it's okay uh, but healers are still keeping her up uh, for spells we got three rage a jump uh, one freeze a quake and a poison but queen's pretty much just funneling right now he is gonna be entering or he's gonna be setting up the funnel leaving kind of a, a, a trail of breadcrumbs at nine o'clock um, for his main push for the town hall. But as you guys see down here at the bottom, towards the bottom of the base, uh, just doing a straight golem bowler uh, rage funnel down there. We can go ahead and uh, uh, take out those defenses from over the wall. You guys can clearly see the trail of breadcrumbs like I was talking about at nine o'clock, kind of slowly making its way, uh, kind of like a treasure trail right to the town hall. So we got a jump spell down, a huge wad of bowlers, Plus, he's got bowlers coming out of the CC uh, where he has giants and he's got um, that king leading in front, you guys. Uh, so here we go. Rage spell down. Uh, 
and you, here comes the CC. There goes the freeze, a wizard tower, an expo, the infernal tower, the freaking bomb tower, all inside of that freeze spell. Uh, he could not have drained any more any more value out of that free spell picking up four defenses as you guys see uh the bowlers and the king get the town hall down ending at 56 percent that was huge right there especially with our recent 10 v 11 struggles that attack um that attack and especially uh, i remember kala's attack really really uh i mean they were must uh, these attacks were you had to double these attacks to give us a chance uh, but huge shout out to our 10v11 guys trying to get back on um, track and definitely looked a lot better this war okay guys we got PSC though the attacks almost over uh, but yeah huge shout out to 10v11 guys PSC coming in here with a straight up bitch attack guys uh, bringing two golems he said you know what I don't give a shit even though these infernal towers aren't single target I'm still going to bring the golems golems are OP using this huge push right here. Look at the split he gets from the heroes. He's got a raid spell in the core where he goes ahead and wipes out the Inferno Tower and the Town Hall. These skellies uh, doing a good job distracting that other Inferno Tower on the upper right-hand side of the base. And look at this flank, you guys. You already know right now at this point when you're seeing this attack live, you know this is a three-star. It's just a matter of time. Uh, more specifically because that level 50 Archer Queen ability, plus he's got the Grand Warden up, uh, he still has Witches up, uh, Bowlers, I mean just completely wrecked this base and there we go, pretty much swagged that Archer Queen ability. Uh, but PSC getting it done, an 11 v 11 3 star yet again, always coming in clutch dude. Um, but yeah. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. 116 to 114 was the final. Fortune Steel walking away with the victory. Uh, huge shout to everybody in FFS. Uh, this was a huge war for us. Uh, you know, the, our first win. Uh, I, know, I know it's only week two, um, but it definitely feels good, man. Huge shout to Valar Mughulis. Uh, best of luck to the rest of... Um, Best, best of luck in the rest of your guys' season. This was a really, really fun war. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it. Definitely, don't forget to like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel. Comments, questions, or concerns in the, in the comment section below. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next video.